here's the original menu from uh, London Chop House. Dinner on the town in Detroit, you know, you know now and decades past. Oh, this was a this was the a nationally known restaurant in Detroit. The city has a rich dining history. Restaurants that are mainstays, some long gone. It's a poopa. Danny Raskin can tell you something about everything. Yeah, you, you light it up, big big deal. <laughs> that's flaming cheese. Yeah, you know, you don't order that. That that's just a sideline. The, the big thing are the the lamb chops in a Greek restaurant. Raskin lives by himself in West Bloomfield, 101 years old. He knows a lot of people. I knew a bunch of the boys from the Purple King. That was back in the 1930s. Really nice guys. They're young fellow, young boys. But they were nice guys. They hurt anybody, it would be among themselves. With the Purple Gang, he saw a bit of gunplay, but no one got shot. Not while he was around. Raskin, too, was just a kid. I never knew but I then he found a career. I, I never knew I was going to write for a paper. As a newspaper man, he's been writing for more than 80 years. The last 78 with the Jewish News in Metro Detroit. But before that, he was with the Detroit News, just as World War II was getting started. I was a cub reporter. I was sent out. The guy was selling pigeons. In those days, it was pretty bad with the war on. Raskin filed his report. The editor stole his byline. Must have been a pretty good story. There was regular pigeons from the, from the street. The guy was picking them up, putting them in the truck, selling them to the people as doves to eat. And people were buying them. Was that when you decided you wanted to be a food writer? No. <laughs> After the pigeon story, he joined the Jewish News, starting with its first edition. I went to work with them about 42. Here he had more than a byline. He had a column called The Listening Post, reporting on the younger generation and their whereabouts around town and overseas. It came years after the war was over when Raskin turned his attention to food. And I went across the street to the chef's delicatessen, had something I liked about it, I wrote about it. He had beef brisket with a big loaf of bread. From that, he started a new column on the Food and Fun Guide page. There was a picture called Best of Everything. Box Office Gold, the best of everything, kind of a patent place in New York City that had more about whining than dining and other things, too. Raskin's best of everything stuck to the food. Since December 1965, columns come every week. Man alive. A lot of columns. More columns written than anybody in the nation. That's what I was told. These are columns. Here, I got them. All kinds of columns. Look. Columns. Right. Got a thousand columns. That's right. just yeah. on his computer. There are more than 10,000 overall. Now, these are ones that I'm, I've got to write about yet. I've got tobacco, uh, big, big Alora. This is the choices that I'm writing about. With the best of everything, Raskin's a food writer, but never a critic. Sometimes I'll go to a restaurant and I won't say nothing. Nah. I don't like to bum rap a, a restaurant. I hate, to, I hate that. Because they got too much money on the, uh, in the restaurant. Some of these guys... They got the last dollar in there. Yeah, I don't want to put him out of business. Still, Raskin yeah. will tell readers what he really likes. I'll only go to a deli where they cut it by hand. Now, in those days, they had machines that would chop, and it would be very, very thin. When it's cut by hand, you get, you get a nice piece. Danny, can I get just one more? Raskin's received a lot of recognition over the years. Some comes on a plate. So this is our sandwich number 100, our Danny Raskin. And we put it on our menu last year to celebrate Danny's 100th birthday. The Danny Raskin at the Stage Deli in West Bloomfield. Meatloaf on hala with a bit of horseradish and sweet pickle. This sandwich is a classic and it's going to stay on the menu with 100 for a while. If he makes it, God willing, to 105, then we'll think about a new sandwich with that number for him. This is just one of many Danny Raskin sandwiches on menus across okay. Detroit. But what the hell, big deal, yeah. <laughs> Where does Detroit's past restaurant glory stand next to today's food scene? Old timers say that the years ago it was better, baloney. The restaurants today are getting better than they were then because you had better food, better service, everything all the way around. 
especially downtown Detroit. Still, some of us like looking back at what once was. Yeah, so I always enjoy his reminiscence of restaurants that uh, at one time or another held a significant place in the Detroit community, are now gone, and it brings up a nice memory. One of the many places Raskin writes about then and again, a lost west side landmark at Seven Mile in Wyoming. They just say, I'll see you at Darby's. It's been years ago. Darby's oh, opened yeah. in 1955. It seated 500 people. Oh yeah, it was a terrific operation. Oh my God. A restaurant and delicatessen all in one until 1968. They had a fire, big fire, and people were crying watching the flames, but they never found out how, how it started. People still want recipes for the delicacies served there. Oh yeah, there'll never be another Darby's. There are others, the chop houses, the seafood joints, the fine dining with skyline views, but Raskin has one tip for diners wherever they go. Be curious, ask questions. The one thing that people don't do is ask the wait person, what is this on the menu? Point to something, what is it? The wait person, if they don't know, don't eat it. 10,000 columns, 10,000 restaurants. Does eating out increase longevity? Could be, but Danny Raskin has a regimen. Barbells? Yeah. <laughs> Is that how you get to be 101? Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs>